And now I want to show you how you can use your calculator to find a couple of these things. So first I'll do the TI-84, TI-84. And we're working with statistics. So on your calculator, what button do you think you push? Stat. Stat. Very good. You can see it right there. Okay, so go ahead and push the stat button. And then you get a couple options. If we want to input data, then we just want to hit select edit. Okay. Now, if your thing is clear, then you're good to go. If you want to clear an entire list of data, you just scroll up till where you select L1. Then you push clear and it clears it all. And then just hit enter and it moves you down. Or maybe yours is blank to start off with because you've never used this wonderful little tool. So now all you have to do is type in all your data. So we got eight. And then you just hit enter. Two, 10, 17, 16, 1, 5, 9, 3, 10, 16, and 27. So just looking at this, we see L1, and this is data piece number 12. So that tells me there's 12 pieces of data. If you count them up, you'll find out that there are 12. Okay. If you go all the way up to the top, to L1, you'll notice now it puts it in a set notation. Okay. So all of our data now is in L1. Now, let's go ahead and calculate uh, a couple things here. Uh, let's put it in order first. Let's rank this. So in order to rank this, you want to go stat again. I remember earlier I was talking about ranking. Another word for it is sorting. Sort A stands for sort ascending. Sort D stands for sort descending. So we want to sort ascending from least to greatest. And now it's asking you for some sort of input. So we want to sort a list. Now the list we want is L1. So if you look on your calculator, you can see an L1 right above the number one. So you're going to hit second, one, and that put L1 right here. Now when you hit enter, it's not going to be very exciting. It just says done. Okay. What that means is it did it. Let's go check that it did it. So how do we get back to our list? We hit stat and edit. And all the data is in order for you there. Okay. Now let's go ahead and use this to calculate um, a couple things. So if we want to calculate some statistics, go ahead and push stat again. And if we're calculating, we go over to Calc. And because we're only dealing with one set of statistics, we want one var stats. Okay, so hit Enter on one var stats. Now at this point, it's asking you for a list. So we could type in L1, L2, L3, whichever list of data you want to calculate the stats for. So you can actually put more than one list in. Now, if you leave it blank, it's automatically going to assume that we're using L1. Okay, so we don't even have to type anything else in. We can just hit enter. And you should recognize that first thing there, X bar. X bar <coughs> is your mean. So it's 10.3 repeating. Now there's a couple other things it gives you. This is the sum of x, so this is the sum of all the data, 124. Okay. Don't worry about these next three. We're going to talk about those next time. n is 12, meaning there are 12 pieces of data. So if you did 124 divided by 12, you would get 10.3. 
If we keep scrolling down, we get a few other pieces of data. We have min x is 1, q1 is 4, med is 9.5, q3 is 16, max x is 27. So when you look at this, these are uh, the low, the high, and your three quartiles. So right here, your median is 9.5. Now, one thing the calculator doesn't give you is the mode. Okay, So for that, you do have to still kind of look through there. And what do we think? What happened the most? No mode. No mode. Okay. There were two tens and two sixteens. So no mode. And for the mid-range... We'll get back to our stats here. It does give you the minimum and the maximum, but that's it. You have to find it on your own. So you're going to go 27 plus 1 over 2, which is 14. Okay. Now let's use this data to talk about quartiles. So the quartiles, again, are Q1, that's the 25th percentile. We have Q2, which is the 50th percentile, also the median. And then we have Q3, which is the 75th percentile. So in, in the previous example, quartile 1 was the number 4. Now what that means is that 25% of the data is below this. And 75% of the data is above it. And what we're going to do to kind of show this is something called a box and whisker plot. It's, it's showing the percentiles. That's what we do here. Okay? And what that's going to do is it's going to take our lowest number right here at 1. And then it's going to go all the way up to our upper number, which is 27. And then it's going to place a box starting at quartile 1. So let's just kind of estimate where the number 4 would be. Somewhere in here, right? And then it's going to go up to the third quartile, which is at 16. It's a little more than halfway. Okay, so there's the number 4, there's 16. Then it's also going to show a line for our median at 9.5. And then it just connects the lowest to the box and the box to the highest. So what it's showing us is 25% of the data falls right in here. 25% of the data falls in here. 25% of the data falls in here. And 25% of the data falls right in here. Now I want to show you how to do this on your calculator also, because it can do it. So this is something called a plot. We're plotting our data. So you can see in the calculator right here, this thing called stat plot. So we're plotting statistics. So hit second stat plot. And you can do a couple different ones here. So on number one, go ahead and hit enter. And you want to turn, you can turn the plot off, you can turn the plot on. So go ahead and turn this plot on. And then you can choose what type. So push down once. And there's six different types you can do. Here you can just do a scatter plot. Here you can actually make a frequency polygon. Here you can make a histogram. And then here you can make a box and whisker plot. So now if you push down, notice what it does. It jumps down to your different list.
So we'll push back up. We want to go to the right until we get to the scatter plot or the box and whisker. Down here for mark, you can just change what you want the marks to look like. It doesn't really do anything. Now, we want to make sure when we push graph that it actually zooms into where our data is. So now you're going to push zoom and go down to Z stat, zoom stat right there. So it's going to zoom in to where the statistics are. Change the window. And it gives you a nice box and whisker plot right there. Now if you hit trace, okay, it'll trace out exactly what we just drew. So you can see over here, the min x is 1, the quartile 1 is 4, the median is 9.5, quartile 3 is 16, and the max x is 27. All right.